As you probably know by now, I love memoir. I love memoir. I have favorite ways and favorite authors because I like the way they go about writing their memoirs, but I believe all memoirs have a place in this world. I also believe there are as many different ways to write memoir as there are people to write them. And I love finding memoirs written in unusual and unexpected ways. And I'm going to tell you about one of those today. Hi, my name is Patricia Chapontier, and welcome to episode 49 of the Life Writers Vlog, where you can find inspiration and useful tips to help you write your life stories. Now, the memoir we're going to look at today falls into a category of graphic memoir. Graphic memoir. Graphic memoir looks like comics because it's drawn and it's placed in sequential boxes that tell an autobiographical story. It's a way of finding prose and visual art to tell a story. They look like comic books, but often... They deal with deadly serious topics like the Holocaust, aging, abuse, and such. Graphic memoir is not very common, but I do know of a couple authors who write them consistently. One I want to tell you about is Can't We Talk About Something More Pleasant by Roz Chase. By Roz Chase. Chase has been a cartoonist for the New Yorker magazine since 1978 and has drawn more than 800 cartoons for that magazine. She also has a number of books she's written and are illustrated to her credit. Can't we talk about something more pleasant? It's her first graphic memoir, and it received many award, awards. I have so related to the content of this book. Chase is an only child trying to help her elderly parents. Her father's got dementia, and she's trying to get them the care they need but don't want. That was my story with my parents. At times, I laughed out loud with this book, and at other times, I cried because I so related to her experiences. It's the role that many of us are either in now or have played in our, sometime in our lives. She includes photos in here as well. This came from when she was cleaning her parents' house out and all the things she found, which I really relate to I'm doing that for my parents. I want to show you just some of the pages to give you a sense of what graphic memoir looks like. It's... Uh, a lot of handwritten, or it looks like it's handwritten, illustrations throughout. There's pages that look like comic books, all kinds of, of information in here. The book walks through the time she really started noticing the decline of her parents and tried to help them. I want to read one page to you. This is on page 20. This is how this page looks. It looks like a comic book. She's got a descriptive block up at the top, and then she's got other things below it. In the first block, it says, After 9-11, things quickly returned to the usual routine with my parents fighting their battles. And the mother says, Bananas are disgusting. The father says, Bananas are nature's perfect food. This was depressing, but also reassuring, at least to me. This is what she's thinking. Whatever marbles they had, I guess they still have. And nevertheless, by 2002, they were 90, and it was hard not to notice that every time I came to see them, the grime had grown thicker. The piles of newspapers, magazines, and junk mail had grown larger, and they themselves had grown frailer. I could see that they were slowly leaving the sphere of TV commercial old age. Spry, totally independent, just like a normal adult but with silver hair. And moving into that part of old age that was scarier, harder to talk about, and not a part of this culture. Then she's got a guy here down at the bottom, 
and it's like 600 calories a day, live till you're 140, cryogenically frozen head, drink a glass of vinegar a day, live forever. She says at the very bottom, something was coming down the pipe. That something was their parents' decline and her being forced into making a lot of very difficult decisions. I hope that gives you a sense that memoir can be written in any way that suits you. If you have talents like Chase does, you can incorporate drawing into your memoir. If you like to cook or do photography or garden, see if you can incorporate some of those gifts into your memoir. What do you think you might use in your memoir? I'd love to know if you've read some out-of-the-ordinary memoirs. So tell us about it down in the comment section below. But remember, the only way to do memoir or anything else wrong is to not do it at all. If you like this episode you just watched, sign up to be notified of future vlog posts and upcoming events. Use the buttons down below to share this episode on social media or with a friend who might enjoy it. Until next time, everybody, happy writing. If you enjoyed this week's episode, you will love our Life Writers membership. Whether you don't know where to start writing your life stories, have started and stopped many times, or have been writing but want to receive feedback to make your stories better, the Life Writers membership is where you need to be. We have a Get Started Roadmap, an extensive library of instructional videos, live events via Zoom, and a supportive and active community. If you want to take the stories that live in your heart and mind and put them onto the page, check out Life Writers at lifewriters.us.